It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the movies of June 23rd, 2000. Only two movies to look at today, so let's go ahead and jump on on the new one. We'll start off with the biggest of the two new releases, and that is the Fairly Brothers follow-up to their Something About Mary, Jim Carrey and Renee Zellweger in Me, Myself, and Irene. Diagnosed you as having a split personality. I should get some. I don't remember any of this. Meet Charlie, sweet natured fella. Sweetie, that's kind of dangerous. You want to move it up onto the sidewalk, away from the traffic? You've been avoiding confrontation, but this guy inside, Hank, he doesn't. Meet Hank. Now he's a rough customer. What are you staring at, four eyes? You want to start me out? Just open the choker bubble cord, pal. What is your problem? I got no beef with you. This is between me and the kid. Unfortunately, Hank is Charlie. I have to take a pill every six hours or I feel funny. What's it called? Advanced delusionary schizophrenia with involuntary narcissistic rage. From those pesky Fairly brothers. <laughs> oh, it's on now! <laughs> Directors of There's Something About Mary. What the hell are you still doing here? Can't get rid of me, Hank. Hank! Hank! Oh, you're only hurting yourself! Jim Carrey. Uh, let go, girl. I'm the green of the pastures. Come on. Let go. Me, myself, and Irene. Punch me in the face. What? Look at me, one of us. Clearly, I want to make a fingernail love taps, you know? Come on. Whip my head out. So that trailer kind of gives you some of what the plot is. You have Jim Carrey as this Rhode Island state trooper named Charlie, who after years of continuously suppressing his rage and feeling, suffers a psychotic breakdown that results in a second personality and Hank coming out. And um, he's doing this while he has to take in this person to a uh, corrections office in, in New York, played by Renee Zellweger. And, of course, the chaos ensues from there. And, um, you know, this was, the like I said, this was the first movie the Fairley Brothers did after there's something about Mary and... A lot of people consider that to be one of their best films, Dumb and Dumber, possibly. I just put this up there in the top three because, man, this is a really, really funny movie. This plays to all the strains of what I like about the Fairley Brothers' early works. I mean, it's got a lot of slapsticky humor. The black comedy in this movie is top-notch, and sometimes it's even literal black comedy. Like, I love this idea that Jim Carrey basically has these triplets who are biracial. One of them's played by Anthony Anderson, and... When these guys show up on screen, they just they really are part of the humor of this movie. They are really hilarious when they're on screen. Like, they really do have some of the funnier moments in the movie. But the real star of this is Jim Carrey. I mean, Jim Carrey has to play these two different personalities. And, man, there are so many great, fun, quotable lines from this movie. Some of them, some of them I obviously can't say on here because of obvious reasons. But, um... Let's just say that there are a lot of F-bombs in this movie, and um, they most of them are pretty funny. Like, I really... Like, some of the gross-out humor is actually really clever and funny, too, and that's really t hard to say when you really think about it. Like, gross-out humor most of the time isn't that clever, but this is... The Fairly Brothers find a way to make this kind of stuff really clever. Back, at least they did back then. Nowadays, uh, they want to be more serious now. Of course, they gotta make a schlocky oscar bait stuff like Green Book or Champions, but... Um, but this is back when the Fairley Brothers really used their strengths to work to this to the film's advantage. Um, uh, Renee Zellweger is pretty good in the movie too. I don't think her chemistry overall with Carrie works very well. I mean, she's got to play against the the two different personalities for this one guy, and I don't know. I just didn't feel it at first. I thought she was kind of the weak link overall. I thought she was okay, but she definitely could have been a whole lot better. I think they were also dating at the time too. I could be wrong on that, but um. But like I said, man, this is just a really, really funny movie. And sometimes you can really believe in what Charlie is going through here. I think a lot of people have that second person there inside of us that just wants to, like, get his rage out there and just basically results in the second personality. And uh, I think most people can really – most people do a, a, most, a, good, a, a good job of containing it. But um, here's what happens when you, when you just can't take it anymore and really, like – I think a lot of people can really relate to this, and I think it's really funny. I think it's really clever stuff. I think it's really well done. I think it's definitely one of the best Fairly Brothers, Fairly Brothers movies. And like I said, man, it's quotable as hell. Like I can't again, again, I can't say these quotes because, um, <laughs> like I said, there is a lot of profanity in this movie. I'll just say that. But um, 
But yeah, man, I love this movie, man. I really do love this movie a lot. Uh, just great elements all around. I can't recommend this one enough. This is definitely one of the Fairly Brothers' best films. Probably top five overall, honestly, the more I think about it. But uh, that's me, myself, and Irene. So let's go ahead and move on to our last film, which is another really good movie. The first feature film from Art and Animation, and that is Chicken Run. Of course, Mission Impossible 2 was the big hit of that summer, so of course we got to do, we got to parody that. Um, honestly, I'm surprised that the, I think that might be one of the earliest attempts for somebody to parody a, a popular thing coming out at the time or something that they knew was going to be a big hit, which really, that's probably the only reason why they did it. But uh, but I digress. Uh, trailer aside, this is all an incredible movie. This is, of course, Armin's first animated feature film, and it centers around a group of British anthropomorphic chickens who seek an anim who see an a American rooster named Rocky, played by Mel Gibson, as their only hope to escape the farm when the owners want to turn them into chicken pies. And uh, kind of like with Toy Story a couple of years prior, this was a game changer for animation. I mean, while Toy Story per showed what computer animation can really do, this is a film that really showed what claymation could do in feature-length form. And for Armin, it was a big test for them to see if they could make this work, and this was the first of several films that they did with DreamWorks uh, throughout the 2000s, and um, good start. I mean, it's a really f damn good movie. It's got a great cast, Julia Sawala, Mel Gibson, Miranda Richardson, Timothy Spall, uh, Jane Horrocks, Imelda Stalton, just a phenomenal cast, really good writing by Carrie Kirkpatrick, who's written a ton of great stuff over the course of her career. Of course, Wallace, the people behind Wallace and Gromit are behind this, and Wallace and Gromit is great stuff all around. This was just a winner all the way through. Granted, it has sometimes when it borrows a little too predictable elements to it. Like, of course, we got to have the liar reveal happen, and that's something that it's a it's a really bad cliche, but you kind of have to do it at this in t this type of a story. And um, it does run a little bit too long, but that's really one of the few flaws I have with the movie. I think the rest of the film is very clever. I think the animation overall is very well done. The music by John Powell and Hans Zimmer is really and Harry Gregson Williams, not Hans Zimmer, although I think he did a couple of other. Uh, Ardman movies down the line, but um, it's uh, Harry Gregson Williams and John Powell doing the music for it, and I think they did a very good job of handling that, and it's a good, fun adventure film. It's a good, fun an animated adventure film. It was really one of the, it's probably the best animated film to come out in 2000, honestly, the more I look at some of the movies that we have on here, this is definitely very high up there, if, it's, if not the best animated film to come out that year, and um, and, uh, yeah, and as of doing this, we're about one week away from the sequel coming out, uh, Chicken Run, Dawn of the Nugget on Netflix, which could be good, but uh, it's going to be, I don't know, it's going to be hard for me to not see these characters of Ginger and Rocky and not think of Julia Sawali on Mel Gibson. Yeah, Tandy Newton and Zachary Levi are great actors, but when I think of these two characters, I think of what I see in the original film, and um, I don't know, hopefully it's good. I'm hoping for the best, but... Um, like I said, man, this is a great film. I can't recommend this one enough. Definitely check out Chicken Run. And so with that said, we wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. When we meet next time, George Clooney and Mark Wahlberg star in The Perfect Storm. Mel Gibson, back again with a new film with Roland Emmerich, The Patriot. And we also have The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. Those are the three films that will open up on 4th of July weekend of 2000. And we'll take a look at those on the next episode. But until then... Uh, thank you very much for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this, uh, please hit the playlist on the next page, check out the previous episode, and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this on this channel. 
Now, don't go too far away because coming up next, we have a new time about the movie's flashback. We're flashing back to the weekend of August 26, 1988, with um, seven movies to look at, including Deborah Winger and Tom Berenger in Betrayed, Mark Harmon and Jodie Foster in Stealing Home, uh, Bobcat Goldthwait and Hot to Trot, Chuck Norris and Hero in the Terror, uh, Crossing Delancey, The Thin Blue Line, and The Year My Voice Broke. So seven movies to look at overall on that, and we'll have that for you coming up right after this. <laughs> 